Welcome back to Aero 3170 Aviation Safety. This is presentation five on textbook chapter five about the role of government in aviation safety. Government agencies have a primary responsibility to promote safe operations and protect everyone from coming into contact with aviation operations. The safety guidance that comes from the government is not always compulsory, it sometimes is just advisory. Government safety guidance is an important defense against human error and is designed to increase safety. But safety can only be increased if the government regulations are followed. An important term to remember when discussing government regulation and the government's role in aviation safety is blood priority. So what is blood priority? What does it mean in regards to aviation safety? Well, historically, if lives have not been lost in an aviation accident, little change is made. Unfortunately, it takes the spilling of blood for government to make important changes to safety regulations. So blood priority simply means that changes in regulations, in safety rules, are only made usually when uh, lives have been lost in an accident. Now some may think that the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, is the only agency involved in aviation safety, but that's not true. ICAO stands for the International Civil Aviation Organization. And ICAO is responsible for the promotion of international aviation. The NTSB, or National Transportation Safety Board, is responsible for investigating aviation accidents that occur in the United States. OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, uh, is responsible for regulating workplace safety. So let's take a closer look at each one of these agencies. ICAO, or the International Civil Aviation Organization, is part of the United Nations. And again, it's a specialized agency of the United Nations that promotes the growth of international aviation. It's global in nature. In other words, it involves countries from all over the world. And ICAO's vision is to achieve sustainable growth for the world's civil aviation systems. ICAO was formed in 1944 at what was called the Chicago Convention to promote international civil aviation. The convention was signed by 54 representatives from all over the world. Each representative was from a country that was uh, involved in international aviation. And that happened on December 7, 1944. Since 1944, ICAO has grown to 191 member states. And when I say member states, remember I'm uh, referring to countries. ICAO is based in Montreal, Canada. And there are seven regional offices all around the world. They're located in Bangkok, Thailand, Cairo, Egypt, Dakar, Senegal, Lima, Peru, Mexico City, Mexico, Nairobi, Kenya, and Paris, France. ICAO is made up of three governing bodies. The first body is known as the Assembly. And then we have a Council and a Secretariat. The Assembly meets every three years. All 191 member states are invited to attend each assembly. Each state has one vote. In addition to the 191 member states, international organizations are invited to review the assembly as well. The Council of ICAO is a permanent governing body, and it's made up of 36 contracting states and gives direction to ICAO's work. These 36 contracting states are elected by the Assembly. The states that make up the Council are elected by the Assembly based on three specific criteria.
criteria. They are states of chief importance in air transport. They're states that make the largest contribution to civil aviation. And they're states that ensure that all major areas of the world are represented. The Secretariat is the third governing body, and that's headed by the Secretary General. The Secretariat is divided into five different bureaus. They are the Air Navigation Bureau, the Air Transport Bureau, Technical Cooperation Bureau, Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau, and the Administration and Services Bureau. So each of the five bureaus of the Secretariat has a different function. The Air Navigation Bureau, or the ANB, is one of the most important. The ANB updates all of the ICAO's governing documents. Standards, or uh, the rulemaking process, is kept current by the ANB and by updating documents. And these are known as annexes. You'll hear that term quite often when discussing the ICAO documents. Uh, again, they're known as the annexes of the Chicago Convention. The standards and provisions that are developed in the three categories are standards and recommended practices, which are also known as SARPs, procedures for air navigation services, also known as PANs, and regional supplementary procedures, known as SUPs. Now, the ICAO standards and recommended practices, or SARPs, are either standards which are necessary for safety or for regularity. They're recommended practices desirable for safety. And the contracting states of ICAO are required to conform to these standards and have uh, promised to try to conform to all of the recommended practices. The ICAO standards are necessary for safety and regularity of international air navigation. All the contracting states are required to conform in accordance with the convention. And if a contracting state cannot conform for whatever reason, they are required to notify the council. A good example of a SARP is Annex 10 which requires pilots and air traffic controllers that work on international flights to demonstrate that they are proficient in the English language. Assembly Resolution A32-16 was proposed in response to some uh, commercial aviation accidents that were attributed to English language deficiencies in one way or another. And the resolution was meant to bolster the ICAO language proficiency requirements, or the LPR, for pilots and air traffic controllers in 1998. The LPR was implemented in 1998, and then it was strengthened in 2003. Member states were then given five years to comply. So why was the LPR strengthened in 2003, and why was compliance uh, with the LPR extended in 2008. As part of a class discussion, review the ICAO LPR document posted on D2L and be prepared to discuss. ICAO relies on all of the member states to ensure that the uh, SARPs are complied with. Recommendations for compliance with the English language proficiency is published in ICAO document 9835. The FAA's compliance procedures are known as the Aviation English Language Standards, or AELS, and that's described in Advisory Circular 60-28B. Review AC 60-28B in D2L and, and be prepared to discuss the problems with these procedures. In 2010, ICAO had a high-level safety conference, and the purpose of that high-level safety conference was to develop an annex that was exclusively dedicated to safety management systems. This was done to elevate safety management systems to the standard level. 
there were several benefits to this approach. The safety management systems uh, recommended in Annex 19 address safety risks proactively. And they manage and support the regulatory and infrastructure required for safety management systems. The Annex reinforces the role played by the state in safety management systems and it stresses the concept of overall safety performance. There are four pillars recommended for safety management systems for uh, state safety programs, and these are important for you to remember. The first pillar is safety policy and objectives. The second is safety risk management. The third is safety assurance. And the fourth is safety promotion. Later on in class, when we review Chapter 12 about managing safety, we'll go into more detail about each one of these pillars. For now, just remember each one of the four pillars. Again, safety policy and objectives, safety risk management, safety assurance, and safety promotion. Now, the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, is the largest agency in the U.S. Department of Transportation. The Office of the Administrator of the FAA reports directly to the Secretary of Transportation, which is a cabinet-level position. And there are 78 FISDOs, or Flight Standards Di District Offices. And these are nationwide, and they're responsible for airlines, air taxis, flight schools, engine overhaul shops, and private pilots. Concerning air carriers, Part 121 air carriers, their certificates are held at the closest FISDO to the carrier's headquarters. Each carrier is assigned three FAA inspectors, and they're designated as either an operations inspector, a maintenance inspector, or an avionics inspector. The FAA is composed of five different lines of business. Air Traffic Organization, or ATO, Aviation Safety, or AVS, Airports, or ARP, Next Gen Office, and Tech Centers, or Technical Centers. The ATO is in charge of operations. It's the operational arm of the FAA. And the ATO is responsible for safe and efficient air navigation. The airspace uh, that the ATO is responsible for is 30.2 million square miles, which represents 17% of the world's airspace. Employees are service providers, and they include 35,000 controllers, technicians, engineers, and support professionals. The AVS, or Aviation Safety, organization is responsible for several safety areas, including aircraft certification, production approval and airworthiness of aircraft, and certification of pilots, mechanics, and other safety-related positions. The airports organization is responsible for programs related to airport safety, which include inspections and standards for airport design, construction, and operation and national airport planning, uh, environmental and social requirements. NextGen is responsible for the changes that are planned to transform the air traffic management system. NextGen is planned to reduce delays, save fuel, lower carbon emissions, by integrating new and existing technologies, which include satellite navigation, and also uh, advanced digital communications. So we are moving away from land-based navigation systems um, and uh, emphasizing satellite navigation or GPS navigation. And we're moving away from radio communications and toward more digital communications. One federal aviation regulation that we'll discuss quite often in this class is part 117 which addresses fatigue management systems and rest rules. 
These regulations are designed to improve safety, but unfortunately some regulations create controversy. Review the ASRS example at the end of chapter 5 and be prepared to discuss the issues described in the report. What action do you think the FAA should take and what action do you think the airlines should take based on this report? OSHA, or the Occupational Health and Safety Administration's primary mission, is to ensure safe and healthful working conditions for all Americans. OSHA sets and enforces standards, and they provide training, outreach, education, and assistance to employers. OSHA covers all employers and employees in the United States except workplaces protected by other federal agencies. For example, uh, inside of an aircraft uh, is, is uh, the FAA's jurisdiction. The EPA, or the Environmental Protection Agency, is uh, the agency whose mission is to protect human health and environment, including protecting Americans from significant risks to human health and the environment, and reducing environmental risk based on the best available science. That's the end of presentation five on chapter five concerning the role of government in aviation safety. The next presentation will cover chapter six on reactive safety.